and welcome back. My name is Tatiana from Tatiana Creative Stamping Up Adventure and I am coming to you live from Australia. I am an independent Stamping Up demonstrator and this is my series of videos called Fantastic Fun Folds. It requires some fun. <laughs> uh, tonight we are going to look at the double Z fold. So we did that last week, but this week we're going to do a different version of the double Z fold because there's always more than one way to do things. And I just wanted to explore all of them. Well, not all of them, as many as I can. If you are watching live, you can see a little red live right there. If not, don't worry. And if you're watching on YouTube, hello as well. Don't worry that you've missed it live. Just enjoy, watch, hopefully you'll learn something. And please do leave a comment and ask any questions if you have any. Good evening, Priscilla. Thanks for joining me. So let's head to the craft desk and get started. Hey, Renee. Fabulous. Hello, Michelle. Thanks for joining me. Oh, you just dropped off Arvo shift. Excellent. Hey, Amanda. Okay, so fantastic fun fold, Z fold tonight. And we're going to start with a whisper white thick base. And I forgot to grab that out. And we're going to almost be using the entire sheet. Hey Tanya, lots of people jumping in. So let's just get right in it, into it. Today's Z fold, we're going to first cut at ten and a half centimeters, and our card will be landscape today, just to change things up. Oh, enjoy safe driving, Kayla, and um Enjoy time at home. Now we're going to score it in half. So this is exactly what we've been doing with all the Z folds up to now. It's bringing out the scoring blade. So scoring that in half and then taking the card front. Oh, hello, Monica. Thank you for joining me. I've just dropped out my scoring blade. There we go. And in half again. So that creates the first Z. Let's, let's, uh, so I've scored it in half. I'm going to grab my bone folder and really get that fold nicely. And then I scored again across the front in half. And there is our first Z for the double Z fold. So I'm going to put that to the side and take my trimmer. Now we're going to almost use the entire piece that is left over. Firstly, I'm going to make it a little bit less high and I'm going to cut two centimeters off. You can put that to the side and I don't need it as long. This one's not going to go across the entire and so I've instead of measuring out so I can pull the arm out and measure out 25.6 centimeters but I also worked out that I could cut off 4.1 so for me that is just a lot easier. So I've cut out Yes, you are watching me live for a change. How fun. <laughs> and now I'm going to score it at 12 and a 12.8. And then pretty much the same half again, which is 6.4. Perfect. Put the trimmer to the side. And again, we are going to fold and burnish. Where did I put my bone folder? There it is. Burnish the folds and fold that back onto itself. And there's our second Z. Hello Kay and hello Jessica. Welcome. So that's our second Z. We've got our two Zs. This one is going to flip 
and essentially sit on top. Just needs a bit of a clean. It's approximately a centimeter border around the edge there. And then when it's all glued down, it'll open like that. Now this one will not lay flat on the table, but it will stand nicely on display. Now it's time to decorate. And tonight we shall be using the Little Ladybug stamp set. This is a free host stamp set during celebration, which ends this month. And it's been my favorite, favorite, favorite stamp set of this year's celebration. And we're going to do a few fun techniques. First off, I need a piece of cardstock, which I'll be adding on top. It's super cute, yes, it is a super cute. So let's get cutting. I'm going to start with I need to open some new cardstock. This is balmy blue. And I'm going to use it to cut a bit of a... Bye, honey. Bye, honey. Have fun at the gym. I'm going to start to the side. Bring this in. And I like to cut mine about five millimeters smaller then yeah, we'll do five millimeters so the height was oh, ten and a half eight and a half so we'll do eight centimeters by 12.3 three And that will be a nice little border there. But I'm going to add another one. Just because I can. And because I want to do some ink blending. Sorry, uh, maths on the fly isn't always easy. Uh, what did I say that was? Eight centimeters, yes. So I want it three millimeters smaller than eight, whatever that works out to be. And that was 12.3, so that means that would be 12. Sorry, imperi imp empirical, imperial measurements. This is A4 cardstock and it's all proportionate to the A4. So we're going to do, have that. Now let's start decorating. I'm going to grab some green paper. And I'm going to create a sky look. Now I think I can lower this down a bit now so you can see. Hi Leanne, thank you for joining me. We're looking at another version of the double Z fold. So I've got some balmy blue ink here and I've already got a wedge of stamping sponge with balmy blue and all I do is I ink that up and you always start off your paper because the initial bits are very spongy you could say so oh I've got some purple ink splatters which are coming through ah do you know what every piece oh I was going to say every piece of paper has two sides. I'm not like. Can skies have blue? Yes. We'll, um, yeah, we'll keep going. They're your go to wow cards. I'm just trying to find a bit. Yep, they're a good one. There we go. So I'm just going to ink the sky up. And the idea is that when we look at the sky on a bright sunny day, which it has not been here today, it's a bit darker at the top than it is towards the horizon. So I'm trying to recreate that somewhat. It doesn't have to be perfect, but 
but each time I go I'm trying to take the ink a little bit further down and because I'm going further down the ink kind of is used up more at the top so I'm getting a lighter layering at the bottom than I am at the top which is what I want hope everyone is well so you can see that is now and the reason why I'm not using balmy blue is because I wanted it lighter but with the balmy blue mount behind it it will have a nice look so if I bring that in back here you can see it's got a quite nice subtle look it's not as contrasting as it was initially when I cut it don't need to add any more ink to that so I'm just gonna I like to adhere things down as I go so that I'm not missing placing misplacing bits and pieces there we go and now we are going to add some what are we called ladybirds and this layout was semi-inspired by a demonstrator called Ross Davidson, who did a beautiful card with part of blues and grass at the bottom. And this stamp set also has a coordinating die set, which is called Ladybug's Dies. And I have done some pre-die cutting of the grass. Two, three... We need all four bits for the card front and I thought would be cute. Hi Karen, thanks for joining me. So I've pre-die cut, I haven't got the dies here, I've got them, excuse me, at my, I'm just going to add some darker. So I used Shady Spruce cardstock and I'm using a sponge dobbler now. The reason why I'm now using the dobbler is because it's smaller and it's this these die pieces a smaller area and I'm just adding that to the grass tips that just gives it a little bit of a nice uh, less flat look I guess you could say we can add those little grass bits now too let's see I'm gonna grab the take your pick tool Lovely to see you here. Well, not quite see, but lovely for you to join me, Karen. Thank you. And when I don't want to get ink on my fingers, this is how I add my little elements. You can use this trick for bigger elements too. There we go. Adding the grass. What's awesome is that you do get two grass dies in the die set, meaning to get the four pieces, I only had to run it through the die cutting machine twice. Is that fantastic? Now we're going to stamp one of our ladybirds or ladybugs. I never know what to call them. I know that some people call them ladybirds. Ooh, wrong lid. Let's. Where does the stamp set go? There. I want the flower on the front too. Let's start. I'm going to put that up here. Good. It's still in view. And let's start with uh, the flower. And I need a block. And I'm going to be using Memento ink because I'll be colouring these images with my stamping blends. They are alcohol based markers. And the Memento is water base so it won't bleed when you color hi 
Vicky, no need to be apologetic. We are looking at another version of the Double Z Fun Fold card. And this time it is landscape instead of portrait like last week. And we're decorating it using the Little Lady Bug Stamp Set. Hey Susan. Suzanne, sorry. Not Susan. Suzanne, thanks for joining me live. Um, ba -ba -bum. I, which oh, there's so many favorite cute little don't know exactly which ones we're going to use let's add this one this one do, do, do. let's do three because I can mount all three onto the one block and stamp them. Because these will be all die cut out. Doesn't really matter. And now I'm going to do, do the traditional red, I think, today. I will do a second flower, just in case we want to put another one on the inside. There. Oh, not quite inked, that's okay. What we can do is flip. Clearly my ink pad needs a little bit of re-inking. Might do that upside down so that I know. Perfect. And what I'll do is I'll die cut that second flower out now so that the others are all sitting the right way and I don't start colouring the wrong thing. These dies hug the image so you can see, I'll bring that up, the dies hug the stamped image so you align it so that you can see the outline of the image and then I'm going to run that through. Great flower. And now we'll do some colouring. The flower I'm going to leave white. Add mango. I'm going to add just mango melody dark to the centre. Just to give it a little bit of colour. Otherwise, we're going to leave it black but oh, white not oh, black where did I get black from and I'm using the shaded spruce light and dark to color the leaves and the stem of the flower so I'd like to start with the dark I do have a video in my coloring series showing how to use colouring blends, or stamping blends to colour. So if you want to have more tips and tricks regarding that, head over to my Facebook page or my YouTube channel and you should find that there. Beautiful. Might that look sweet. And the same thing over here. Now in, I have some exciting news. I did touch on it last week but my retreat is coming up I've finally finalized all the details and I'm so excited so it'll be from Friday the 15th of May 2020 till Sunday the 17th of May 2000 oh not 2020 yes 2020 that's right 2020 I've got the dates right and it's at War Hope which is 20 minute drive west of Port Macquarie on the New South Wales mid-north coast and we're going to have so much fun it's a full weekend of crafting and nothing else I'll take care of all your food if you wish and we you can craft the weekend away Shade, you don't have the shaded spruce yet Michelle I'm surprised so 
I do love real red on these. So let's do that. Oh, no. You grabbed real red. I grabbed Poppy Parade. Let's go with what I grabbed. So I'm going to color these ladybirds in. Lady beetles, lady birds, whichever, whatever you'd like to call them. So again, start with the dark and blend out with the light. So don't worry about the spots too much because we'll add black blend on top to darken the spots. I think I'm going to leave the bodies white today. A bit less colouring and something a bit different. Plus it kind of blends in with the concept of white flowers. So yes, uh, I have a website dedicated to my retreat, which is craftingretreat.com.au, retreat, not retreats. And check out all the details there. I'd love to have you come along and join me. There will be game, well, a bit of games and prizes, uh, but definitely you'll get a goodie bag, two goodie bags, and together they retail over a hundred dollars. And you'll also get some little gifts throughout the weekend. It'll be a fun weekend, enjoyable by all. And the best part is that you can just concentrate on your crafting and not have to worry about anyone else. And all types of crafters are welcome. So you can bring in knitting and knit the weekend away or crochet or cross stitch or scrapbook, whatever you like. It's all about you taking that time out from the world to craft. And what's awesome because, well now I'm talking about the little ladybirds is because these are three different ladybirds we can die cut all of this at once don't have to worry about running that through the die cutting machine too many times because we just lay all the dies down and hey presto bing bang boom i am trying to be neat and tidy I'm most conscious about people watching me color. Hey Judy, thanks for joining me. Now grabbed basic black dark and just going over the dots. I want them to be a solid color. If you still wanted the shading to come through from the original stamping, you could use the basic black light or you could use one of the greys to colour in the dots, or you could leave them. It's up to you. And what's good about using the black is that any red that I got into the dots will be covered up now. So looking a bit less. that to black. I'm going to leave it. Like oh, you don't have to apologize. Oh, I can't read your f full comment, Jody. J Jody. I don't know why I said Jody. I'm sorry. Judy. I, I totally get it. My brain can't even say people's names right. I said Susan instead of Suzanne and now Judy. J Jody instead of Judy. All good. Life is life. My little man went on camp today. I'm kind of missing him. Little miss is missing him. No worries, Margaret. Don't apologize. Honestly, you don't need to apologize if you're late. It's, it's a live video. You come in when you can and you watch what you can and then you can watch the rest later if you want or if you don't, you don't have to. So I'm just grabbing the dies we need. That one and this one and my trick to making sure they don't move during the die cutting process is to just add a little bit of washi tape 
And I try to add it primarily to the edge of the die and then onto the edge of the paper there. Not too much. Should have grabbed the piece of washi tape first. That one is almost, well not almost, that one has finished. And I do reuse the piece of washi tape over and over and over until it essentially disintegrates, until I cannot use it anymore. So you can see it kind of rips and that's okay. There we go, I'll be right back. back they look a little pale to me these little ladybirds I'm gonna to have to add a bit of color okay so I'm going to do one of my favorite techniques when I want to add a little bit of color but not saturated and want it kind of hint at what I use is I use I take the what's it called color lifter first essentially what I'm doing is saturating the cardstock with the color lifter it's got a bit of alcohol in it and now I'm going to go in to the shady areas that I want to add and this is ivory this is one of the skin tones so I'm not adding it in the full areas I'm just adding kind of highlight or shadows if you could say and then I'm going to take the color lifter again and blend the edges. Now as that dries you'll see what I mean. So it's given a hint of color. These faces are no longer white and pale looking but they're not fully colored either. Low tack, yes that's also another good option Suzanne but I had this washi tape that I wasn't using so I figured I might as well use it but yep low tack painters tape is the other option to hold your dies in place now the reason why you want to add the layer of color lifter first is because it allows the blending process to happen much better this technique works best with light colors I've done it with Bermuda Bay once and it just it wasn't the same I really recommend it with light colors so this ivory is great for it so it gives a hint of color it moves the pastiness without adding color and blending that edge quite nicely so you can see this one's now the alcohol's kind of evaporated a bit more and that means that you can see Oh, the edges are less blended. in. And the other thing you can do with the color lifter is lift some color. So there's a bit of red there that I'm not happy with. And you generally need to leave it a little bit, let it evaporate, and then you can add some more. Oakley dockley. I think we're going to, I'm getting a bit of transfer. What side do I want the flower on? Now, remember, this is going to go on our Z. So those who are just joining, we are doing the double Z fold card. I showed at the beginning how to cut the two pieces of cardstock. And this one is different to the previous week's double Z because the previous week had just a small strip of Z. And this is essentially taking over the entire card. It won't lay flat on the table. And it's a, it's different. That is purely why I'm doing it. I just wanted to show a different option. It's something different. When someone gets this in the mail, they're not going to expect that. They're going to expect a regular card. And this is just nice. So that's going to sit there as so. And this is going to go on top 
as so. And the point I was trying to get to was that I can have the flower sitting off the edge here because it's not going to be off the card completely. So we're going to, I like it quite, quite like it there. So I'm going to add some glue using multi-purpose liquid glue. And the reason why is that I can now place this and wiggle it somewhat into place exactly where I'd like. I'm going to grab my snips. Thank you for the thumbs and trim that off at the grass there. Gosh, that ink from the grid paper. You're welcome. Susan, I love sharing tips. And let's see, I think this one, I really like combining this little ladybird with the flower, with the flower, so the flower next to the flower. I'm gonna hear this one. And I do feel like I need a little bit of glue down there. to have that setting and thinking happy birthday hey lady you're as cute as a bug where's that one you're as cute as a bug I haven't used that one yet so let's stamp that and I don't want it to be too bold and in your face so I'm going to use balmy blue which is the ink we use to create the there so a subtle sentiment and like I said I like to assemble bits and pieces as I'm going Ooh, looking for the glue so that I don't misplace any pieces Adding this bit to here. Pretty. And now this area is going to be left blank so that there's space to write. Because if we go back to here, you see that there isn't much space to write except for that panel. Because this panel we don't get access to because it doesn't sit flat. So we've got to, not got to, I would like to decorate that panel. And I'm going to do something very similar. I know I should have cut it all at once, but that requires a lot more brain power at the time. So I'm going to grab my trimmer again. And this was the piece of cardstock left over. So that is the same height as that it's actually cut off from that so that's going to be a great starting point and it was cut five millimeters smaller so that section is 6.4 that means 5.9 don't you just love maths and that is going to go right there now where is that piece of white Oh, that is the piece of white, but it's not big enough. Bummer. I'm going to have to cut that again. I'm just trying to do the maths. One, two. It was 8.1. Is that on camera? Yep. No, not 8.1 in height. The height of this, it's not ten and a half. Ah, so this would be eight. So I need to four three millimeters smaller than eight. There we go. Yes. Measure once, cut twice. No. <laughs> Jeez. No. Measure twice, cut once. Whew. And that was 6.4. That's 
I hope I'm seeing laughs going by because that was really silly. Perfect. Just going to ink that up like we did the... Good. Glad you're all laughing at me. That's <laughs> that was a silly advice. So I'm just going to once again bringing it off and kind of start off the paper. If you don't like that darker edge look, because as you see, there's the edge gets a bit darker doing this method than the inside. What you can do is cut your paper bigger than you want and then trim it down and that way you get rid of that edge but I didn't mind it today because I'm mounting the card white whisper white cardstock onto the balmy blue that darker edge is less obvious it's still there but it's very stark against white you can see it's very stark but now against the balmy blue so if I compare that it kind of blends in oh inky 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 fingers and I'm gonna oh, cut two more grass pieces And again, add some ink to the edges of those. This is shaded spruce ink, and the cardstock is shaded spruce as well. There we go. Big tip, as good as measure once, is close your ink pads before doing anything else because you can drop things into ink. And now I've got ink on my finger. I didn't do a very good wise way of so yes I do use my chamois as a finger wipe as well why not if it can clean stamps it can clean my fingers let's assemble this little bit glue don't need too much of this glue a thin thin stripe is plenty That in and where's my use the take your pick again for these so that I'm not getting that excess ink. It should be dry, but knowing my luck, I always spread it. Oh, that went crooked, and there's still time, it hasn't dried completely, so I still had time to move it straight. And that's one of the reasons why I love the liquid multi purpose glue. The other being that it's so much more cost effective than the snail. Snail's convenient and less messy, but man, the first time I'm, I used it, didn't make many cards with that one snail, and I was not impressed. I only used snail kind of stuff for scrapbooking previously, and it used to last quite a bit because I didn't need a lot. But for a card with all different layers, I found that I needed more snail and it didn't last very long. Now, add that panel here, and we can add another ladybird. Ladybug. Where's our third one? I did do three. Yoo Where are you? Hello. Anyone seen it? This is what happens when you have a messy desk. That. Yoo Don't lose that one. Great. Sorry, guys. Did 
bring the third one over? She flew away home. <laughs> that was the one that wasn't flying. It was the one kind of shy, hiding. Remember? I'm going to do a random tidy up. I bet you that was the piece. Mm, there we go. Could have used that. It's all right. Nope. Nope. I did check the floor, but I'll check again. Ouch. No. Jeez. Has anyone seen it? <laughs> it's this one right here. Let's check the stamp case. No. I guess we're not using that lady bed. It's fine. I was going to add her there and then do some fun, tricky thing. Okay, we'll keep it simple. We'll go there. Do we want another flower? No, I think that's too overwhelming. I think that's Perfect there. The house was on fire and the kids were alone. I'm not sure where you're going with that, Michelle. Not sure if you're talking to me or you, there was a mistake. Should be going. I hope nobody's house is on fire. Oh, are you talking about the lady beetle? That's disappointing. Now, we could do that as that, and then that will be that. But, I'm thinking, it would be fun if we did a bit more stamping. And I don't know if I'm going to ruin the card by doing this. Oh, right, nursery rhyme, yep. I grew up in a household with Russian nursery rhymes, not Aussie ones or English ones, sorry. I do feel sometimes a bit daft. I'm going to add some tiny lady beetles down there. And not too dark, so I've grabbed Smoky Slate and I'm going to stamp that off. Putting that scrap paper there. I know it's going to be super light, but that's okay. I will find it when I'm finished. You're right, Suzanne. And I'm going to add, is that on screen? Kind of tying that in with the card in there. And now we are ready to glue that all together. Now you could have used colored cardstock, could have used balmy blue background base, but I really wanted some white. I just wanted that fresh, crisp white look. Gluing it together, I'm going to do it in bits. So I'm going to add some adhesive to that back little panel. And firstly, going to line that. How am I lining that up? This is, thank you Priscilla, in half. This is going to butt up to this. So, that, yep. And I'm just going to eyeball that that is about even and press that down. Be a good idea to just put a bit of weight and let that dry briefly. And now I can flip this one open and we're only going to add glue to half because it's only half. So 
So I'm, I'm going to steer less than half to the right hand side there because A, the glue will spread and it will hold and B, I don't want the glue to ooze out because if it oozes out from behind there it could go over here and we don't want that. But there's the double Z fold and there it is. You're cute as a bug. You're cute as a bug. Nice little children's card. I do think it could have been good on balmy blue now that I'm looking at it. But I wanted to do something different with the white white. And you can write your message here. You like the white, so cute. Okay, good. Nice to hear that. It does bother me. Where's that ladybug? So there we have. Ah, no card is complete until we stamp the inside, which we have, and the envelope. So, oh, grabbed a whisper white envelope and I thought, let's do these ones again. I haven't stamped enough of these. You love it, Tanya? Excellent. So we'll do top left-hand corner. For those in Australia, did you know that you can't, shouldn't be stamping at the bottom here? That is a no-go zone. And this is the stamp zone, so you can't stamp as in postage stamp, not stamping area, so you shouldn't put anything there. And then the address zone shouldn't really have any stamping either. So this is basically where we're left with allowed to decorate our envelopes. On the back, however, we've got free reign. And what I'm going to do is stamp these little cuties along the bottom. And how perfectly do they fit? Three of them across the bottom there. And so there we go. Another fun fold, double Z. Next week we will move on from the double Z fold. That's, this is now the third, well no, this is the second on double Z, but um, it's a Z fold. We've looked at three different Z folds now. I hope you're learning some good tips and tricks. I haven't decided. I'm umming and ahhing over a few different ones that we can do next week. Thank you, Kay. Uh, but please do join me next Monday. What's that? No, we're the 9th. So that's the 16th. For another fantastic fun fold from Tatiana Creative, which is me. My name is Tatiana. Thank you so much. For, oh, please do case away, Tanya. Uh, thank you so much for spending time with me, watching my video, learning something perhaps, and picking up on some tips and tricks, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye for now. Thank you, Monica.